Bikes have some pretty bonkers features these days, don't they? But what does 2023 have in store for us? What are the big trends to watch out for next year? In this video, I'm gonna share my predictions and feel free to share yours by leaving a comment down below. Okay, let's dive in. As we all know, COVID caused a massive increase in bike prices due to supply chain basically falling over itself and bike prices going through the roof. Now, hopefully, we might see some sort of readjustment in 2023. I did a video recently on how brand new 2023 model year bikes are being discounted already, which is a hint at the possible readjustment we might expect in the future, fingers crossed. So supply definitely went down and demand went up during COVID, but it appears the opposite is happening. Supply has gone back to some sort of relative normality, but demand has slowed down but there's still a healthy demand for bikes because cycling will always be popular. But it's rebalancing of supply and demand might see, hopefully, being across here, that bike prices do come down over the next 12 months. There's definitely perhaps more of a hopeful trend we'll see next year. I don't know how much we'll actually see bike prices come down because one thing I know from my 40 years on the planet is that prices of everything go up, but they rarely come back down again but hopefully we might see a change in the bike industry and lower prices will be good in 2023. I said it before, but I reckon we've hit peak aero, as in bikes are getting as aero as they're likely to get with current technology and the UCI's fairly restrictive rules around bike design. And we see evidence of this with every brand new aero bike launch because the claimed gains made for their bikes are usually pretty small and definitely smaller than say five or 10 years ago when the leaps forward being made were definitely bigger than they are now. There's no denying the benefits of aerodynamics if you wanna ride fast or go racing, but hopefully we'll see a renewed focus on weight. Now, of course, weight isn't everything, but it's clear many people watching are upset by the weight of modern road bikes compared to what was available 10 years ago. And the Specialized Athos was a stunning showcase of what is possible. So the Athos is a super lightweight, crazy disc brake road bike and definitely shows what's possible with carbon fiber despite disc brakes, electronic gears and other gizmos. No aero on that bike though, definitely a stripped back classic road bike for racing or grand tours or whatever you wanna do with it. So hopefully we might see more bike brands respond to the Athos and we are starting to see the weight of aero bikes become lower and lower. The new Giant Propel is a good example of an aero bike that's now as light as a normal road bike from just a few years ago. When the first specialized Tarmac SO6 disc brake bike came out, it was about 6.8, 6.9 kilos in a top end build. But now, a few years later, you can get an aerodynamic road race bike that's the same weight as that bike from a few years ago. So it really shows the progress made with aero bikes, and hopefully we'll have more of that in 2023. Gravel is definitely here to stay and isn't a fad, but I do see the gravel category being stretched and splitting into two distinct camps in 2023, and we see a sign of this already this year. So we'll have bike design for racing, so weight, aero, minimal tire clearance, and no concession to versatility being the key focus for their bikes. Then on the other side, adventure bike packing options with massive tire clearance, relaxed geometry, definitely taking a leaf out of the mountain bike book as the BMC Earth showed is so good, and more mounts for bags and bottles and everything you wanna take on a bike packing adventure. So two distinct camps for racing and for adventure and enjoyment of riding bikes. And I see these two camps becoming more cemented in the bike world going forward. The question is how fast and how aero can those race bikes get? And how close can they be to a road bike without being a road bike? as I found that Canyon Ultimate will take a gravel tire, even though it's officially a road bike, and how capable and how versatile can a gravel bike really be? How big can you go on the tires? How slack can you go on the geometry? I think there's definitely more to play with there, and we'll hopefully see some exciting bikes in 2023. Whether you like them or not, e-bikes are big business and hugely popular and selling in fast numbers. And there's one development in 2023 I'm really excited about. Currently, e-bikes are big, heavy, and pretty noisy, but that could all change thanks to a motor from TQ. It's really clever. 
just two moving parts means it's really compact, it's lightweight, and best of all, it makes no noise at all. Now, it's not as powerful as the bigger motors available, but if you have a lightweight e-bike, you don't need so much power and get away with a lower power motor. That also means you can have a smaller battery and that makes the whole bike lighter. And the TQ motor is becoming very popular with bike brands. Trek were the first to use it in their new fuel mountain bike, but Scott and BMC are using it as well, and they're putting in everything, mountain bikes and road bikes. So expect this motor to be really popular in 2023, and also really force other e-bike manufacturers like Fusur to really up their game. There is a history of car brands making bikes, but in general, they're pretty rubbish and best to be avoided. But that could all change next year, thanks to Porsche buying e-bike motor company Fusur. Now Fusur is a reasonably popular motor, a lightweight, low power motor, popular in road bikes, gravel bikes and some mountain bikes as well. But this year, Porsche bought a majority stake in Fusur and the press release had this very juicy nugget of information. The first joint venture will develop, manufacture and distribute a future generation of high quality Porsche e-bikes. So there it is in black and white, Porsche is gonna make an e-bike. And with Porsche's experience of making amazing electric cars and taking Fusur on board with them, could we see a really fantastic game-changing e-bike from Porsche. I definitely hope so. I'd love to see what a car company, as innovative as Porsche is, really apply themselves properly to making a decent road bike or gravel bike or mountain bike that really can shake up the status quo in the bike world right now. To anguish cries of the nothing more than 90s mountain bikes, expect to see more suspension on gravel bikes next year. Now, personally, based on my testing experience so far, a bit of suspension on a gravel bike is a good thing without it being a mountain bike or making you think you should be on a mountain bike instead. As with mountain bike suspension, you have a smoother ride, more comfort, and a faster ride over rough gravel. So this year we had the RockShot Rudy suspension fork, which was very good. And if you remember two or three years ago, Fox came out with a similar product, but they've updated it this year and I have one in my hands right now, going on a bike very soon. This is a brand new, short travel, lightweight, very bling looking suspension product. So now Fox has a suspension fork to rival the RockShox, and we have two really good options in the market. So will we see more bikes being spec with suspension forks like this in 2023? We had a glimpse of the future from a mountain bike company, the YT Scepter, my review video linked down below, and that's a fantastic riding bike, mountain bike geometry, suspension fork, a good package for off-road shenanigans. So there will be a review of this coming very soon. Make sure you subscribe to the channel if you wanna see that. Should be exciting to see what it's all about. Very orange as well, isn't it? So for people like myself who want to take their gravel bike to the limit and ride them on terrain, perhaps not designed for a gravel bike, I can see suspension becoming more popular. Suspension forks are one option. There is, of course, a full suspension, and we have the BMC Urs, which has front and rear suspension or cushioning. Then, of course, the new specialized Diverge STR with a future shock at both ends of the bike. That bike definitely caused some division in the comments on my video of that bike. I predict we will see more bikes like that, really pushing the boundaries of what's possible and what's acceptable in the gravel bike market. Let me know what you think of the trend prediction by leaving a comment down below and if there's any I've missed as well. And if you wanna see some of the bikes I'm excited to ride and review next year here at Just Ride Bikes, then watch the video right here. And don't forget to subscribe by hitting the button right here. But that's all for now. Thank you so much for watching. I'll see you again very soon.